My father, Paddy Kennelly, was a pharmacist. He opened his shop in 1920 in Tralee, County Kerry. He processed film for photo dealers, and you could say that even from that time before I was born, the seed of photography was already sown in me. My first camera was an Agfa Carat 4, a 35mm fixed lens camera. Then a friend, Joe Deneen from Ratmore, gave me a present of an Agfa Record 120 roll film camera. The picture quality was very good. For £100, the limit of my order overdraft at the time, I bought a new Lenhoff 69 camera. That's a deal. It enabled me to take pictures that enlarge well. Within a short time, it was replaced with a special new Linhoff camera called a Linhoff Press, just sit here, fitted with a normal lens. Behind are three other lenses that went from 53mm bygone, which was very, very good, to a 270mm lens, which was fine for sport. I used this Linhoff camera for taking photos to make postcards. It was so useful that it was able to do with something that wasn't possible before in photographing white hotels and narrow streets. In 1957, Pentax brought out a range of 35 mm cameras with interchangeable lenses. Very few of them remain to this day because we use so much 35 mm film that the cameras wore out very quickly. By 1960, the most valuable item we added to our kit was this new mule head photo transmitter. It allowed us to send photos over the phone lines to picture editors around the world. Within six months, we added a second mule head. Another interesting item I had was a 500mm f16 lens. I bought it for £50 in 1965. It was in my car for the next four years until I found a use for it in November of 1969. A news alert one evening sent me to Shannon Airport in County Clare. A plane had been hijacked in New York by a gunman who wanted a free trip to Italy, and by God, he got it. The plane had to refuel in Shannon and was kept a mile from the terminal. The hijacker ordered the runway lights to be turned off. All other air traffic had to be diverted to airports elsewhere. The only visible light from where we stood was the headlights of the fuel trucks and the cabin lights in the plane. Having had four hours notice, the press of Europe had by now arrived at Shannon Airport. They and I were confined to the airport balcony. I had a heavy Australian Miller tripod which was behind me here. I used it for making movies. I bolted my 500mm barrel lens to the tripod and attached the Pentax body. It was like a rock, very steady. By taking a series of long time exposures, I knew I had usable pictures of the plane and that nobody else with me had a hope. Our wire machines were transmitting to newspapers all that night. It was the only time I ever needed to use that lens, but it was the best 50 pounds I ever spent. Now I must tell you about electronic flashes. We had a lighting problem because the electronic flashes took too long to recharge. I needed a gun that was low in light output for photography of dancers. Mortimer Welch, an electronic engineer, designed a gun for me that did the job perfectly. Then there was nothing on the commercial market that did that job. He used a 240 volt timing bulb for car engines. It was powered by him with two radio batteries, 110 volt, and these two were stored in the camera bag. Six feet of electric flex connected the gun to the flash head. The bulb was mounted in a disused flash reflector. We used this flash for many years for close-up situations. It used so little power that the batteries 
really had to be replaced. The first big change in equipment came when Canon introduced auto-focusing cameras. This was a great step forward, especially where lighting conditions were poor. We can expect changes and improvements in camera and lighting equipment to continue making photography easy and more popular. But don't let anyone tell you that the old cameras were best and negatives were a step ahead of digital. Digital is a marvelous system. I don't think I would be sitting before you today if I only had a negative archive to offer to you. The quality of digital is far richer. There's a much greater tonal range and they keep making me looking better and better. Thank you.